brothers and sisters in Christ, in the gospel today, we have a teaching from our Lord that sometimes is not understood. And so I'd like to just uh, try to take apart this somewhat mysterious teaching, or it's not so straightforward and easy to understand. The scribes accuse him of collaboration with Satan in casting out demons in order, what they're suggesting is that Jesus is, has an unclean spirit and he's simply casting out demons because he's working with Satan in order to deceive the people into thinking that he's the Messiah. That's basically what they're accusing him of. And Jesus points out how uh, this is not logical. And one of the, one of the, uh, the basis of what he's saying is a fact about Satan, which is that, or about demons in general, is that they will never willingly give up a soul that they've taken possession of. And the fact that he can drive them out is the sign that he has a higher power and that he's not among the demons. And that's also why he says that no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. So these demons that take possession of a soul and do not willingly let it go, uh, the fact that he can liberate a soul from them shows that he's stronger and he's above the demons. And then he says, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness. This goes to show that our Lord is, not, uh, is definitely saying that blasphemy can be forgiven, but blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness. And so that's, that's why it's mysterious, because um, how can you blaspheme against God and be forgiven, but blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and not be forgiven? Why? So there, in, in Catholic teaching and understanding, there are six sins generally uh, listed as the sins against the Holy Spirit, and all of them have at the core a hardness of heart. God knocks and wants us to open the door, but he's not going to kick the door down. He invites us to repent but he's not going to force us against our will to do so. And sadly, we can become people, human beings have this capacity to become so hardened in their will and attached to a sin and unwilling to repent that we can die in our sin unrepentant. And that's the sin that can't be forgiven because we have to consent to God's mercy. We have to ask for it. If we don't, our Lord can't give it to us. And so that's the sin against the Holy Spirit, the final impenitence. This past uh, Friday, I had the grace to be in Washington, D.C. for the March for Life. And I came across an article in preparing for this homily that relates abortion to the sin against the Holy Spirit. And again, I repeat, our Lord has said right here, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. So this is not to suggest that abortion is an unforgivable sin. However, abortion, because it is such a grave sin, and because our culture has uh, sanctioned it and is now promoting it, many people can be led into 
the sin against the Holy Spirit through the sin of abortion. And so I'd like to just share with you uh, the observations offered by Father Carota uh, on this point. And the point here is not to condemn, but to offer reasons to repent and accept God's mercy. So with final impenitence, it happens quite often, uh, a woman who has undergone an abortion, or perhaps a doctor who has participated in the killing of an unborn child, will have such a, a guilt that they might even convince themselves that they have to pay for that with eternal damnation. And so will not humbly turn to God and ask for forgiveness. So final impenitence uh, is one of these sins against the Holy Spirit. And the heavy guilt and, and the un unwillingness to, to humble oneself before God and ask for forgiveness can lead one to, in final impenitence, to final impenitence. Another is the sin of presumption, and that is clearly a sign of a lack of repentance. When one commits a sin willingly, knowing that it's a sin, and presuming, well, I'll just go to confession, or God will forgive me, even though I can still avoid committing this sin, but I'm going to do it because God will forgive me. And I've actually heard this praying in front of abortion clinics uh, and, and counseling a young woman, don't do this. And I've heard the justification, well, um, God is going to forgive me. God has forgiven me. It's, God knows my heart and forgives me. Before, she has undergone the abortion. And so there's the sin of presumption. And if one does not uh, turn away from that and humbly ask for forgiveness, again, this, this hardness of heart can lead to, can become the sin against the Holy Spirit. Another one of the six sins against the Holy Spirit is despair. And despair is more than just losing hope because there's an active element in it, and that is giving up. To actively just consider uh, that God's mercy is out of reach. And so not seeking it. And of course, abortion, a lot of times women are tempted to abortion out of this sense of hopelessness for the future. And it should be pointed out that abortion never really uh, is a way out of that kind of despair. It only makes it worse. Another one of the sins against the Holy Spirit is to resist the known truth. Knowing the truth and still refusing to conform to it or accept it. And on this point, we can point to the humanity of the unborn child. It's, it's a known fact. It's not a contested issue. The lie keeps being repeated by those who want to uh, promote abortion, that it's just a blob of cells. That it, but even now, we hear that people supporting abortion don't even bother with that excuse anymore. They know it's a kid, they know it's a child, and they say, well, the mother has the right anyway to kill and the doctors and it's legal and that's the law of the land and so there is a clear hardness of heart which if not uh, repented of could lead to the unforgivable sin become an unforgivable sin another is envy so the the another one of these six sins against the holy spirit is the envy of another's spiritual good and uh, Quite often, pro-lifers are attacked and their character challenged uh, when they're trying to help people avoid sin and trying to save the lives of the unborn as well as uh, the, the lives, the quality of life of the mother who's going to make a tragic mistake that she can never undo. Uh, and, and so those who are pushing abortion attack those of a higher moral character. And that's a sin against the Holy Spirit, can become one, if not repented of. 
Finally, the sixth sin in this list is obstinacy in sin, to persevere in sin. It's said that to sin, to fall, is human, but to persist in sin is demonic. And to not repent then gives the Holy Spirit no opportunity to, to help that soul return to God. And we see this especially now uh, in the celebrity of abortion. And, and this recently came uh, in the news, an actress receiving one of the awards that Hollywood gives and basically saying that she was so glad that she had had her abortion because had she not, she couldn't, she wouldn't have been there to receive that award. And so to promote something that's evil and to uh, encourage others to continue in that sin is, can become, again, a sin against the Holy Spirit when, there, when there's that hardness of heart that will refuse every uh, impulse of the Holy Spirit to repent. So, being that we've just focused once again for the 47th annual uh, March for Life on this injustice, let us pray for all of those who are despairing of abortions they had to know that God offers them forgiveness. They need only to acknowledge the wrong and admit that they cannot undo it and just ask for God's mercy and they shall receive it. That goes for the doctors and the nurses and everyone involved in this crime. Let us pray then that America and the rest of the world will not persist in sin, but repent and receive God's mercy. And may the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of the pro-life movement, inspire those who are praying and working to bring about this conversion to persevere in the good work and to obtain grace for those who are not yet repentant to convert. Praise be Jesus and Mary.